Okay, here we have another type of screw-in fuse. Now this is a motor fuse, and we'll get into that in a little bit, but the most important part I want to look at right now is this base. Now you can see that base is different than our standard screw-in fuse, which is right here. This one has a base that looks very much like a uh, screw base for a uh, lamp or light bulb is different. Now the reason they did this is they did not want you putting the wrong fuse in. Now with this other one I could put, remember I told you I could put any other size I wanted to up to about 30 amps and I could raise my circuit protection so high that it wouldn't be effective and you could burn up wires and etc. Well, this was designed to stop that. This base being smaller than the other one will not fit in there and there's a little adapter goes into the screw base for these. Now this one here is a 15 amp okay, um, and the 15 amp by the way, the connections on this thing are these little spring clips here and this end piece. So, uh, this is because this is 15 amps, this is a specific distance. There's a specific distance between here and here. If this was 10 amps, this would not be the same distance from here to here. Or if it was 3.5 amps or 5 amps. They all had different distances. And so you could screw them in, but they wouldn't work. Uh, you'd screw them into the into the adapter and the adapter would not allow them to make contact because of the different depths of these uh, screw threads. And like this one This one is, say, that far down to the bottom. Well, another one may be longer, and it won't work because when it pushes on the bottom of the adapter, it disconnects a circuit. And if I went to the point where there was, I used one that was shorter, like that long, then this end would not reach down far enough to make contact. They were specific for a, a certain amperage of fuse. And this was kind of a solution to eliminate putting too large a fuses in circuits that did not have the wiring or the capacities to, uh, to handle it. Uh, I'm going to take this one apart and we'll kind of look at it because this one is a motor fuse. Okay, this is what this slow blow looks like inside. Uh, you can see the two brakes, the weak spots right there and right there. Those will blow if there's a fairly massive overload. Uh, that one in the center is a little different because that's low temperature solder. And what it's going to do is if there is an overload but not a massive overload, it's going to melt. And it's going to take a little while to melt so it gives a time delay. So this is a motor fuse. If I had a motor draw, uh, this thing's 15 amps. If I had a motor draw of say 25 or 30 amps on startup, this would not blow. If it was a standard fuse, it would just blow. But because those little thin pieces are big enough to handle more than 25, 30 amps, maybe up to 40 amps, uh, they won't burn in two. They would if there's 100 amps going through it. But if there were, uh, say, 20 amps going through this thing, and it's a 15 amp fuse, then that solder would melt. Now, it may take a little while to melt because it's a fairly massive little piece. But when that thing melts, eventually it'll come apart. So that would mean if the motor stuck and wouldn't start and drew too much power, or was running at too high a load and it was in excess of the 15 amps, then after a time delay, this would blow. But under normal operation, 
it would not because it takes a while for it to blow that's one form of the slow blow fuse and we're going to look at some more types and see how they work